Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Check the post of Rescue Nation brought to you by Nebraska Spy and Hospital. Today I'm joined by a former Outland Trophy winner, an All-American, two-time national champion in 1970 and 1971. He was also a first-round draft pick by the New York Giants in 1972. Mr. Larry Jacobson, how you doing, my friend? Pretty good so far. <laughs> was that introduction satisfactory? <laughs> That's about that, that. It's so long ago, we can't remember some of the stuff. <laughs> well, so actually, you and I were at the Huskers uh, open practice a few weeks ago, and one of your former teammates, and I ended up having him on the show about another topic, but cornerback Randy Borg, we were chatting about the defensive line from that 1971 team. Now, the Outland Trophy that you won, that means it's awarded to the best interior lineman in all of college football. And he said, man, he won that trophy, You're talking about yourself, but he may have been the third or best defense, third or fourth best defensive lineman on that team. And he talked about, you know, Rich Glover, who finished third in the Heisman vo- uh, Trophy voting in 1972. Willie Harper was a two-time All-American. John Dutton was an All-American, a fifth overall pick in the NFL draft. So I just wanted to start this off by having a little bit of fun, you know, because you win the Outland Trophy as the best interior lineman, yet one of your teammates kind of jokingly says he may have even best been the be- uh, third or fourth best defensive lineman on our team. I just wanted to get your reaction on that. Uh, you know, it, it, in some ways it probably could be true. I just happened to, at the time, was the biggest one. That makes sense. Because D- Dutton, John Dutton, who also came, well, there were two of us from South Dakota that came down. John was from Rapid City. I was from Sioux Falls. But John was a sophomore that year, and he alternated with uh, Bill Jansen. So John didn't really play that much. And Glover, he uh, basically the year before, he was a tackle, and he played. We we had a four-man line back then, and he played behind me. So that was his junior year was the first year he played middle guard. So we, we did have a heck of a line. We had... Like you said, we had the Willie Harper and Dutton and Jansen and Harper and uh, and, uh, and me, and then the other one was was, was another uh, uh, John Atkins. He ended up being an orthopedic surgeon, so we had a heck of a good line at the time. Yeah, you had an all around just really talented team. You had three first round picks that year: Jerry Taggy, Jeff Kinney, and yourself. And looking specifically at that defensive line, because that is kind of crazy how many first-round picks, All-Americans, Heisman Trophy finalists were all in one room. Why were you guys able to have so many good defensive linemen at, what time, at one time? And what made you so good as a unit? I think that we basically we had two really good re- recruiting years. because they, they, and, and counting, counting Dutton, I guess you could count it as three years. But we also had a, we had some awful good coaches. My freshman coach that year, the year that I came in in 1968, was Monty Kiffin. Yep. And Monty went on to be, you know, the guru in the NFL. Well, he was our defensive line coach back in the early 70s. So, I mean, we had really good coaching. And that's one reason why we were so good. Plus, we just... You know, we had the team atmosphere. We were all playing just for the team. We weren't playing for each other. That's what made us so good. Talk to me about playing in the game of the century versus Oklahoma. What was it like playing in a game of that magnitude? And what was the key turning point in that game to help you guys get the victory? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. They, 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 there was such a build up for that game. The whole first quarter, we really didn't remember. Whole our legs felt like rubber because, you know, we were so excited about it. And one of the turning points of the game, if I remember, I was in the first quarter when Johnny had his run back yep. of the touchdown. But that was so early in the game that you know after that it just went back and forth and back and forth. And if that game would have lasted another, you know, three or four minutes, we we probably could have lost. But it was just one of those things that the teams were just so even that it just, it just you know, it went back and forth, and we just had a little bit extra at the end of the game to stop them. So that's – and the, and the other thing about you, – you talk about the defensive line in that game. I had to look up something for a, an article I did not too long ago. I didn't realize that there's only two, there only two teams – 
or three teams that stored more than seven points in the defense that year. One of them was Kansas State. They scored, I think, 14 against us. And Oklahoma State scored 13 against our uh, our second string. And everybody else only scored seven points. Even Alabama, who we played in the Orange Bowl, who was ranked second at the time we played them. So the only game we really had that year that was close was the Oklahoma game. And that game was kind of fun because we were so scared they were going to do something. We brought all our own food with us. We didn't We didn't take any chances on anything happening down there. So, I mean, it was... You know, it was it was a game to remember, and you 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 you, remit, you go back and you look at it, and you can't believe that it was that good a game. You thought they were going to do something to your food, maybe? Well, they brought all they brought all of the food with us when we came down for our you know pregame meals and the night before and everything else. They didn't want to take a chance on anything happening. I do think people forget just how good that Oklahoma team was. I looked a few things up here, and my question to you, I'm going to ask here in a second, is they the best team, and there's some Nebraska teams that are in this conversation, but are they the best team in college football history not to win the national championship? If you look at some of these things, they were number one in the nation in points per game, 45 points per game they scored, 563 yards of offense a game, and they averaged 472 rush yards a game. This was Barry Switzer as the offensive coordinator. He had perfected that wishbone offense. They finished number two in the final polls. Colorado also finished number three. You guys beat as well. And you guys, that Alabama team you mentioned, you guys beat them 38-6. to Is that Oklahoma team potentially the best team in college football history not to win the national title? They just happened to run into you guys? I don't think there's any question that they were. Because, I mean, they... They dominated everybody they played except us. And I and I can't remember. I know they played somebody in one of the bowl games, and I, I think they, 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 they smashed them pretty good, too. Yeah, they played so, number I mean, five. They, they played number five Auburn, and they beat them pretty good. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things that... Uh, that just uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice, nice to remember and go back and look at it because it's it was it, they they had a hell of a team. And at one time, I look if I had to go back for another, I won uh, another award, the Nagurski uh, Legends Award. And I had to look up something about the team to talk about when I went back for that and found out of the team in 1971, there were 35 guys on that team that ended up playing professional football. Yeah, that's a lot. On our team. Yep. And, that, and that's because they had the USFL, where they had some other, you know, thing besides the NFL back then. But, you know, we just we just had a lot of really good athletes that came up at the right time. So here's another question. It's a fun question. All right, so do react however you want to it. It gets thrown around a lot, though. All right, who would win if it was possible? Obviously it's not, but if it was possible – in a hypothetical game, 1971 Nebraska versus 1995 Nebraska. Who would win this game? And just a little background. So you guys beat number four Alabama that year to win the national title, 38-6 in the Orange Bowl. You beat number three Colorado. And these are the final polls. Okay, not at the times you played in the final poll. Number three Colorado, 31-7. to Number two Oklahoma, 35-31. That Nebraska team from 95, they played four teams in the top ten. Uh, number two, Florida, they beat them 62-24. They beat number seven, Colorado, 44-21. Number eight, Kansas State, 49-25. Number 10, Kansas, 41-3. And they beat those four top 10 teams by an average margin of victory of 31 points per game. So just for kicks and grins and funs and all fun and all this stuff. And Rob Zatica, who played on the 94 national title team, <laughs> says the 94 team would beat the 95 team because the 95 team was full of the 94 team's backups. But just for fun, who would win, 71 or 95 Nebraska, if you guys could play? Well, you know, if you played now, there's no question they'd have beat the living – hell out of us because I was I was one of the biggest guys in the team I was 6'6 and I weighed 245 pounds yeah, and I was a defensive yeah, tackle yeah Glover was 6'1 and like you know 210 or something I mean we were not that big we you know we didn't weigh 300 pounds like these guys got 
did, did in the 90s. So I don't know if there's any question. But if you look at the teams that we played, you know, how many other teams beat the final number two, number three, and number four teams? Nobody has. Yeah. So I don't think I you, you can you can compare them, but up until that time, we were the best. But yeah. we weren't as big and strong and fast. And back then, hardly anybody lifted weights. Dunn was the first guy that ever came in that really put a lot of, of weightlifting in because Boyd Epley had just started. We just all we had was a little universal gym back then. Yeah. So there's no question the '95 team would have beat us at the same time. But if you look at the teams that they played with the teams we played, I think we had a better overall team at the time we played. Yeah. How's that sound? No, that makes perfect sense. It's hard to compare across generations, but if you could somehow make all things equal, you know, but yeah, I don't think anybody's ever beat the number two, number three, number four team in the final poll in college football history. And before we started this interview, you shared a couple of stories with me, and I was wondering if you might share them with the fine folks at home. You shared a story about yourself and Rich Glover when you went to New York. Uh, things maybe didn't go the way that you had hoped, but it was kind of funny. You shared about the draft. Uh, would you mind sharing those here on the show as well? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, we came back after I was after the after the uh, uh, we played out we played out in Hawaii. After the Oklahoma game, we came back, and Rich and I were supposed to go to New York to be on the AP All-American show with Bob Hope. And we flew into Newark, and they were supposed to have a limo pick us up and take us into New York. And we got there, and we showed up, and no limo, no nothing. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. You know, we're, you know, he, he was from Jersey City. I'm from South Dakota. We came into New York. We had no idea what was going on. So <laughs> Richie called his Richie called his dad. His dad's in Jersey City, drove over, and I spent the night in his sister's b- down bed. And we called back to the university. They got a hold of somebody at, 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 the, uh, at the Bob Hope show. They sent a limo out to pick us up the next day. And we went into New York. Forgot to tell us that we were supposed to bring our jersey, so they... They put some, made some red jerseys, and they basically put tape on it for our for our numbers. And uh, and uh, we came back after, you know, flew back to Nebraska after that. Oh man! But uh, you know, no, we flew in. Nobody met us. We didn't know what the hell was going, what the heck was going on. Exciting and then times. And the other one was is in nineteen seventy when Nixon came out to Nebraska, and and gave the trophy to us at the at the old Coliseum. And the next year, they decided that we would fly back to New York or back to uh, Washington, D.C. And it just, they took a, uh, I think one of the, one of the bank's uh, Learjets. They took the two co-captains, which was uh, Taggy and, uh, I can't remember the, de- the, the defensive back, and, and the guys that made All-America, Jim Anderson, and the, and the guys that made All-American, and they flew us back to uh, to Washington, D.C. It was a day, just happened to be the day of the draft. And Jerry called in as, as we're going in on the phone on the plane and, uh, and found out he got drafted seventh, I think, by Green Bay. And when we went into the White House, we hadn't found out if we got drafted yet. And after we came out of the, uh, the Oval Office from Nixon, they handed Jeff... Uh, a message that he got drafted 23rd by Kansas City. I got drafted 24th by the Giants. So we just happened to go down to the uh, the uh, White House press room, and we had a little press conference there. So I'm probably one of the, <laughs> the few guys that ever had a, a press conference in in the White House when we were still in college. So it was it was that was kind of fun. That's how that's but how it was announced. That- was Dev- Devaney Devaney flew in the plane? Yeah. When we went there, but he couldn't come back. Because he had to stay in Washington and come back. So on the way back, all the guys 
that were, were coming back, there weren't any coaches with us, so we raided the liquor cabinet <laughs> on the uh, on the Learjet, so I think they had to restock that when they got home. A little uh, post-draft celebration, nothing wrong with that. Yes. And, and the Jeff you're referring right. to is running back Jeff Kenny, just so the fine folks at home know. Right. Well, I want to appreciate you joining me. Thank you for your time. Love the stories. And until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red. And always remember, throw the bones. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around. An experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.